business as usual, not any sizable number of people want the money. Overnight, First Republic, the 14th largest bank in the U.S., became the third major bank to fail since March, and the second largest bank collapse in U.S. history. After the FDIC seized it, J.P. Morgan Chase acquired all their deposits and most of their assets. I just spoke with, with Jim Herbert. He's the CEO of First Republic. And I asked him, what are the outflows today? And he said, it's business as usual. Now, remember, I'm speaking to the CEO. That does not mean Jim Cramer says it's business as usual, that there are not that, much, that, there are that, not that many liquidations above 250 million, 250,000. It's pretty much uh, the same as you would expect. Uh, I, the J.P. Morgan uh, funding is working, trying to make it so this situation is stable. Now, uh, David, I want to ask you, when a bank tells you that there's just the outflows are business as usual and there's no liquidity problem. That does not mean that we are saying there's no liquidity problem. No. Listen, um, having reported on my share now of financial crisis, when a bank has to tell you that, it's always a problem to begin with. Right. But, it, but, but we have to listen. We have right. to take them at their word conceivably. It's never a good sign when they have to even reassure anybody. Well, I pestered them and pestered them, so let's give them credit for calling me back. Okay. But they said there wasn't deposit outflows? Business as usual. Not any sizable number of people want the money. Now, uh, what, I mean, there were. We know there were. Friday, and there were I don't Friday know what Saturday. their deposit base looks like right now versus well, what it was last Thursday. There was no, I would, okay, he said no comment when I asked what, how much it come out. So, I just want, I'm not trying to save a bank here. I just am trying to report that they're saying it's business as usual. However, there's one big difference between now and 2008. This time there is no systemic contagion. Now, I know that seems hard to believe, but there isn't. It's a miserable moment for First Republic, once a bank beloved by the rich and famous. But it's an all-clear event for everyone else. You see, these guys were supposed to use the tens of billions of dollars in deposits they got from other banks to buy time to restructure. Maybe lure in a deep-pocketed savior. Maybe get a lifeline from someone who's coveted what's left of their well-heeled deposit base. Maybe sell off parts of their bank and go to the FDIC for help. Maybe find some Warren Buffett, a new Warren Buffett, any Warren Buffett. But from the looks of things, they passed in the moment of largesse, the kindness of stranger banks. I couldn't figure out if it was hubris or stupidity or maybe both. In the end, it didn't matter, though. Everyone thought the March mini banking crisis was over, so there's no way the market could handle the implications of First Republic's most likely collapse. So people sold the good with the bad today. It was an amazing session because the vast majority of companies that reported put up really good numbers. And if not for First Republic, their stocks would have been roaring. I'm sure many a CEO went home very confused tonight. I mean, this was an impact of a quarter derailed because of First Republic. Business as usual. Business as usual. Business as usual. There is no systemic contagion. There is no systemic contagion. There is no systemic contagion.